Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to look at the derivative of a position vector and what it means. But first, let's go through the actual definition of what a derivative of a position vector is. So let's say we have a position vector r that depends on a parametric variable t that says that when t has a certain value, the position of the particle you're keeping track of is right there on the path along which that particle will travel. And at a small time later, a small delta t later, the position of the particle will be over there. The red vector here simply defines the difference of where the, where the particle will be after delta t and where the particle was at time equals t, or at the parametric variable equals t. I assume that time would be a good variable for this. Now what happens when your delta t gets smaller? When your delta t gets smaller, your second vector will be closer and closer and closer and closer to your original vector. And at the limit, when delta t goes to zero, the distance between them goes to zero as well. So you can see when the two vectors are really close together, when delta t is really, really small, you can see that that vector representing the difference between the two will be a very small vector indeed, and will very closely match the direction of the path of that particle. And of course, in the limit, as delta t goes to zero, the direction of that vector will be exactly the same as the direction of the particle that the, that the particle will have along that path right here. And you can see that that vector, the difference between these two, will be perpendicular to your position vector. So now let's explore it a little bit more. If we define our position vector, r of t, as being some function of t in the i direction plus another function of t in the j direction, the functions being x and y, then if we take the derivative of that, that should be the limit as delta t goes to zero of the difference between those two, that will simply be this vector right here, divided by delta t. That will then define the derivative of the position vector. And if you then want to write it out, since the position vector r is defined as this, that means that it'll be the position vector in terms of the x, the x function in the i direction and the y function in the j direction subtract from that. Of course, this is those two values or those two functions evaluated t plus delta t and subtract from that what the values were when time or t was equal to t and you divide that by delta t, and then you separate out the x component from the y component, and then ultimately you can define the derivative of the position vector in the limit as delta t goes to zero. When this goes to zero, this one then turns into this equation. The derivative of a position vector is simply equal to the derivative of the x component of the position vector with respect to t, and plus the derivative of the y component of the variable t in the y direction. So you can see that whatever function you have, you can, if you want to know the derivative of the position vector, you simply take the derivative of the x component with respect to the, to the t, in this case the parametric variable t, and you take the derivative of the y component with respect to the parametric variable t. And so if you have a, a function that's, the, that's defined in terms of the x and y components, simply take the derivative of the x component, the derivative of the y component, and that will give you the derivative of the position vector. It's as simple as that, and so we'll show you some examples of how to do that. 